bless you today. Thank God for another day that we can share. We thank God for this excellent weekend that we have enjoyed. Declaration of Independence we had celebrated. There's a passage of scripture that's been dear to all of our hearts. and I've been wrestling with this uh, the entire week and just give you a little bit that we have gleaned from this passage, the 23rd Psalm. Let us pray together. Eternal God, our Father, we love you and thank you. And we thank you for allowing us to serve. We thank you for allowing us to proclaim a word. Now we pray that you would speak to us and through us, that we may be a blessing to those who hear. No more I, but the Christ that is in me. We pray that you be seen, manifest, and blessed. And so we love you, God, and we give you all the glory and the praise. And it's in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank God for this word that he has given to us. It's entitled, The Lord, Our Shepherd. The Lord, Our Shepherd. David wrote this psalm. Many of us have read it and heard it over the course of years. And I believe that even as he had been a shepherd in his young years, He had yielded himself uh, to the will of his father to watch over the sheep, humbled himself and watched over them with an utmost care. And because he was faithful, God not only anointed him to be king, he also gave David the memory, a memory in the backwoods and even in the fields where he was Watching over the sheep, God was molding him and making him and also giving him an image of who he is, who God is, and how God watches over us. When we first look at this particular psalm, it's easy for us to read, but therefore, when we see David and the actions that he took, how is it that he came about it? And how is it that he uh, was such a good shepherd? It's because God's anointing was on him. The Lord was his shepherd even while he was shepherding his father's sheep. His father gave him an assignment. His father, Jesse, gave him an assignment Years ago, he said, go check on your brothers. I want you to see if they're okay. Make sure they're all right. When you go to 1 Samuel 16 and 17, you'll find the stories there. What you'll find there is that David went to check on. His older brothers found out they were, Israel was having a match uh, war even or a temptation to war, challenge to war. Amen, with the Philistines. And there was a big giant there, and all of you remember him, uh, Goliath. He was a big giant. And David came in and found out what was going on. He said, what is the reward for the person who puts him down? And they said, well, we'll elevate you. We'll do certain things. He said, I just want to know what it is. He went to Saul and said, Saul, I think I can handle him. He said, how is it you're just a young boy, you're unable to, uh, you're unable to fight this giant, you're not even equipped. He said, hey, when I was watching my father's sheep, yeah, I was watching them and a, a bear came and grabbed one of the lambs and I went and took the lamb out of his mouth and then when he tried to attack me, I put him down and I killed him. I also did that to a lion. So I killed lions and bears. So this giant that you are facing is no problem for me. And if you just allow me, I'll go and take care of him. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that uh, the anointing of God came over David, gave him guidance and direction. And that as he was a good shepherd over God's sheep, he said, God is the greatest shepherd. Yeah, over all the land. I did good and I did the best I could with my responsibilities that my father gave me. But I learned what a shepherd's heart looks like. I learned what it is to watch over those and care for them. And he's just sat down one evening whenever he wrote this and he he wrote it and he began to proclaim that the Lord is my shepherd. Jesus, when he came on the scene and in John chapter 10, we read a familiar passage. It says, a thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Many of you say, well, what does that have to do with anything? He said, if you go a little bit further, he says, the thief comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. Take away the sheep, wipe them out. 
and make them nothing. Consume them. Uh, kill them if you would. But he said, I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Verse number 11, as you continue in John chapter chapter 10, you'll find that 11 through 17 says he's the good shepherd and he lays down his life for the sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at this, we're not only looking at our father God, but we're also looking at Jesus Christ, the lamb of God who came and he is the good shepherd. I don't know about you. I'm excited already. I thank God for what he has already done. But when we look at this particular passage, when we look here, we see the benefits that come and even in the first verse you said it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want and you can stop right there because first you have to have the Lord in your life let the Lord be your shepherd he has to be your shepherd and then the theme the theme of this psalm is right behind it it says, I shall not want. And for many of us, we would take it out of context. And, but it actually means this, and it's true, that we shall not lack. He will meet every need that you have. And I just thank God we have some wants. Don't get those confused with the needs that God would provide. The first thing we want to see in this particular passage of scripture is that uh, it's a declaration of dependence. Not a declaration of independence. No, no, no. We're, we're close to God. We're, we're making sure that we're tied to him. We're hooked, tied, wrapped, bound, and tangled up with God. He is my shepherd. Is there anyone uh, listening to my voice that can say that God is my shepherd? Yeah, and I won't lack anything because he loves you so much. He loves us so much that he will do anything for it. He's for us. And first you need to realize that it's a personal relationship. Then it's an appropriate provisions that he provides then it's also constant care that he gives to you and I. As a declaration of dependence, we find here, uh, even in Psalm 100, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Here it is. We are his people and the sheep of his his pasture and then it says enter his gates with thanksgiving enter his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name why because the Lord my shepherd for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations is he your personal shepherd is he watching over you have you asked him into your life he is a, wants a personal relationship with you. And if you are a, a child of God, you need to realize that he will meet your every need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Ladies and gentlemen, the sheep do not lie down for any reason. They just don't lie. The shepherd has to make them a lie down and the reason he can make them lie down because they're stubborn they will do what they want he has to provide their needs ladies and gentlemen after I uh, read and found out that Philip Keller gives us an insight on what makes a sheep lie down ladies and gentlemen he said the sheep will only lie down when they feel safe he said they'll only lie down when they're not bothered by insects. They will only lie down when they have enough space. He said they will only lie down when they're not hungry. There are four needs that have to be met in order for a sheep to lie down. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening carefully, you'll find out you won't lay down very comfortably if you don't feel safe. No, no, no. You'll stay up all night and you'll, you'll walk. Walk the floors when you don't feel safe. But God says he'll make you feel safe. And there are many pests that'll get on your nerve. A mosquito 
deal that gets out of the way. It gets on your nerve. You won't rest when they come. But God says he'll make you lie down. He says he'll move that which is pestering you, which is disturbing you. And then you won't lie down unless you have the right space. Isn't it something that we used to have to sleep in bunk beds and, and two of us in one bed. But now we got big beds. We got beds where we sleep all by ourselves or we have enough room uh, even with our mate. But we just thank God for the space. If you don't have the space, it's kind of hard to sleep. And last of all, ladies and gentlemen, all of us get hungry sometimes. And God makes sure that we, he, we have something to eat, something to enjoy. He takes care of our safety. He takes care of those things which are pestering us. He gives us space to rest. Not only that, but he feeds us when we're hungry. Not only physically, ladies and gentlemen, but he also gives us nourishment, spiritual nourishment. I thank God for what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 19. My God shall supply. He was in prison when he said that, but he said, my God shall supply my every need according to the riches in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, the riches in Christ Jesus are unlimited. You need to realize, ladies and gentlemen, you need a personal relationship. He gives us the appropriate provision so we lie down, but he also gives us constant care. Ezekiel 34 and verse 14 and 15, I won't read it all, but it does take with us and lead us also in the same uh, metaphors about the sheep and the shepherd. Because it says, I will feed them in good pastures. And the, their foes shall be on a high mountain of Israel. There they shall lie down in good fold and feed rich pastures and mountains of, in the mountains and on the mountains of Israel. Verse 15 says, I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, saith the Lord. How many of you know that God will supply your every need? He'll make sure that you're comfortable if you just trust him. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. And not only that, but he leads us beside still waters. Sheep won't drink when the water is restless. Sheep won't drink. It's hard for us to sail on a ship. I'll get sick, seasick, ladies and gentlemen, if I get on a boat and it move too much. But uh, how many of you know that God will say peace? And when God says peace, there will be peace in your, in your life. He will, he will speak peace to your heart, even though there are restlessness all around you, ladies and gentlemen. He gives you and I constant care. There's a declaration of dependence. I don't know about you, but I'm depending on God. But not only that, there's a declaration of providence. He says he restore your soul. He said he leads and guides you in paths that are righteous for his name's sake. There are three things that you need to realize there. The declaration of providence, he restores your life. He leads you in righteous paths. Not only that, but his reputation is at stake. Oh, hallelujah. I just thank God that he, he guides us. He restores our soul. Let's take a sheep, for example. If they're walking through the field and some kind of way they trip and fall over on their back, that's called cast. They are cast, even cast down. They are on their back. They can't get up. And unless a shepherd or someone comes along to help them, they will die because they're unable to recover. And the Bible says he'll stand you up and then he'll also restore their life and I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen but every once in a while things go belly up Sometimes you're on your back. Sometimes you're not sure how, what tomorrow will bring. Sometimes life turns you over and therefore you are struggling. And if it wasn't for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't know what to do. But isn't it good to know that even when you're on your back, you're looking up. I say even when you're on the back, you can look to the hills from which cometh your help. And your help comes from the Lord. He restores your life. Not only does he restore your life, but he gives you a righteous course. And I thank God he put, put us on a righteous course. Even 
When we get off course, he still guides us. He works all things together for the good, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And you need to remember also that as you move around and as people see you come and go, you are a representative of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His reputation is at stake. He does what he does for you. He does what he does through you in order for you to be a blessing to someone else. His reputation will be maintained. That's a declaration, ladies and gentlemen, of God's divine providence. Next of all, we find there's a declaration of personal protection. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We find three things there, his presence, his provisions, and his prevention. And I thank God for his presence. I don't know about you, I, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have the Lord uh, walking along my side. Uh, life gets kind of difficult sometimes. The experiences in life get difficult, but it's good to know that you have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords walking by your side even when you're in shady conditions and shady circumstances. Yeah, it, yea, though I walk through the valley, all of life, ladies and gentlemen, is a shadow of death because it doesn't take much. And then we could be gone. Even that unseen enemy is still lurking around. COVID-19 is still moving around. But isn't it good to know that God is not only a healer, but he's a, his his presence is with us and he will also make provisions for us. I thank God that he, he, he provides perseverance. Preservation is made available. He says my rod and my staff. He said a rod is usually for correction. Many of us don't discipline our children like we used to. I came up to spare the rod, spoil the child, and that rod is, is, is doing well because I got beat down, ladies and gentlemen. I, I thank God for the spankings or watching somebody else get one and make me want to walk right and make me want to talk right. Sometimes God has to chastise us. We don't want to hear that. But we, we need to realize that he has to protect us and then he has to preserve us. So not only is it discipline, it's protection. And a rod also represents authority. And I thank God that he has all authority. And the staff serves as a tool. It keeps the flock together. I don't know about you, but the unseen hand of God would keep us together. Even though we have been separated for a time. I just thank God for his unseen hand is still guiding us. And then when we all get together, what a day of rejoicing that would be. And we thank God for his preservation, even though we're absent from one another even at this time we thank God that he will bring us back together again and last of all even as our declaration of his personal protection he says about our prevention I don't know about you but I should have been gone a long time ago when I was young and uh, we used to live in a, a little town a village if you will dirt streets and we used to come, it's in the northern part, they called it Black Springs, Nevada. We used to come out of there and we're on our way to Madea's house or we're on our way into town, ladies and gentlemen. But there was a curve in the road. They called it the dead man's curve. And when you miss that, you you just go off the cliff and usually many uh uh, sailors died. Many uh, officers died because they had too much to drink and missed that turn. And they didn't put a rail up. They never put a rail up. They just left it there. And if you missed it, it's the dead man's curve. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but God will help us. When we're unable to help ourselves, he'll prevent 
things from happening so that we'll protect ourselves. When you are not conscious, he will direct your path. And I thank God for that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear any evil because he's with me. God is with you, ladies and gentlemen. He's making a declaration of your personal protection. And then we find that in verse number five is a de declaration of abundance. A lot of people would love to stop right here. He said, I prepared, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil and then my cup overflowed. He's a host. He's a healer. And then he's one who gives us the abundance when you have an overflow. Whenever the fields are barren, whenever there is no pasture for a shepherd to take his sheep, God says that he would use the shepherd in order to prepare a leather blanket. He would spread it out and he would put food on it and he would entertain all those who were hungry. He would feed you in a private place. I don't know about you, but God, even when the world going crazy, God will prepare a table before you. Even in the presence of those that don't like you. Everybody that's smiling in your face don't really like you. You have to be be very careful, ladies and gentlemen, but God will bless you. Don't let anyone separate you from what God is doing in your life. And when you get scarred up, when the cares of life beat you down, that's where the oil comes in because you'll be trying to eat or you'll be trying to do God's business. You'll get wounded in the battle and therefore he'll put oil on your head. And that's for the healing of a nation. And not only that, but it's for your blessing. I don't know about you, but I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost in order to do what he has commanded uh, me to do and, and what he has commanded you to do. We need the host. We need the healing and blessing. But I thank God for the overflow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about too much. We're talking about enough. It, yeah, that's enough. And when God gives you an overflow, that means that you have enough not only for yourself and for your family, but you also have enough for somebody else that's in need. The overflow is not for you to build a bigger barn and sit back and say, and, but God will say, thou fool, how is it that you, you have cared so much for the things of this world? You have consumed upon yourself and not saw that somebody else had a need. They need some of the things that you have. And somebody say, I'm living in the overflow. But if you're living in the overflow, make sure that you bless somebody. Make sure that you are blessing. But we do make a declaration of abundance. Even when, when, when things get low, when the stores are not selling things like they used to, ladies and gentlemen, God will prepare a table before us. Yeah, even with those who don't like us, he will prepare a table before us. He will heal us when we're sick. Not only that, but he'll give you an overflow. How many of you got joy right now? Even when the way things are you still got joy you still give God the glory you still give God all the praise now last of all ladies and gentlemen we're making a declaration of promise I don't know about you but I need God to be with me he says I, I will surely goodness and mercy Yes, yeah, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you heard it preached over and over. But I didn't say surely. I said surely. Yes, yeah, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that's a word that means God's steadfast loyalty. God said, I'll be with you even if the world goes down. He says, I'll be with you. He said, I come hell or high water he said I'm going to be with you he said I love you I loved you so much that I laid down my life for you and then I got up so that you can get up and I don't know about you but I'm going to give God the glory and the praise the Lord is my shepherd yeah I shall not want I'm making a declaration ladies and gentlemen a declaration of dependence a declaration of providence a declaration of personal protection a declaration of abundance, a declaration that 
that's a promise to me that he would never leave me. He would never leave you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you have a God who loves you. That's why this psalm is so popular. That's why this psalm, even six short verses, it still ministers to us year after year. Every time you read it, you read something else. And you read something, you glean something better from it. But I just thank God for his word. I thank God for the battles that David experienced. Therefore, he was saying, I was a shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd. Question, ladies and gentlemen, is he your shepherd? Is he your shepherd? And if he is, how about us making a new dedication to him? How about us drawing near to God right now? How about us making a resolution that we will stay faithful even in the midst of in uncertain times? The world's going crazy. So, so many things are going on. But let us always look to the hills from which comes our help. Because our help comes from the Lord. He is our shepherd. He is our shepherd. Let us pray together. Eternal God, our Father, we do love you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us. Even in the midst of these uncertain times, you have provided our need. You prepared a table before us. Yea, though we walk through the valley shadow of death all around we won't fear any evil because we know that you're with us for those who are scared now pray god that you comfort their hearts for those who have tested positive we pray that you comfort their hearts for those who not sure they're just fearful comfort their hearts let them know that you are the shepherd and you care about them you will anoint them with the oil. You will provide their every need. And surely, your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. And we will dwell in your house forever. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we are going to commune together on this morning and those of you who have the communion kit with you would that you follow along with us and we pray God's uh, presence with you even as we share together even at this hour. Let us pray together. Eternal God our Father we do love you and we thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Thank you God for your life that you have yielded on our behalf that we enjoy this salvation that we have now. But in remembrance of you, we want to commune together. And so we pray, God, that even though we're segregated from each other, we're spread out. Uh, we thank you that we are still one in you. And so we pray, God, that wherever uh, my brothers and sisters are, that as we commune together, we can know that you are present with us. Now we yield ourselves to you. We pray that you're blessed now uh, these elements, removing them from their natural use into a spiritual one and forgiving all of us for our sins and our transgressions against your will and your way. We love you and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen, amen. and amen. The scripture meet reading for this morning as we read our responsive reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 34. And it begins, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, 
Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. You are the but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye may come together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. We will commune together. First, we will receive our wafer, which represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the scripture says for us, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. And now we will receive the cup, which represents Christ's blood that he shed for you and I. And as the scripture says in verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. One more time. Every head bowed. Eternal God, our Father, we do love you and we thank you for this time together. We pray that you have been glorified in it at all. We pray, God, also that you bless my brothers and sisters wherever they are. Let them know that you're always with them. You would never leave them nor forsake them. So we pray, God, that you be blessed and that we are a blessing to someone else. Even after we leave this experience, we continue in life to be a blessing to someone else. So we love you and we thank you for dying for us. We thank you for living within us. Now we pray that you receive all the glory and the praise and the honor. And it's in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. You have won it all for me. Come on, you ought to praise him right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.